Welcome to our introduction to OpenMP. My name is Christian Terhofen from RWTH Aachen University in Germany. We titled this course the introduction to OpenMP in small bites because it's our intent to introduce OpenMP and almost all aspects of it in many rather short video lectures. This is the first video in this lecture series and it's titled Overview because after two slides on the history of OpenMP, I will talk about the parallel region, which is the most fundamental concept in OpenMP. So this is a history of the development of OpenMP. It started out in 1997 as a version or specification only supporting the Fortran programming language. A little bit later, C and C++ was added, and finally both, or let's say all three programming languages were supported by a single specification. However, during those years, the development in terms of OpenMP adding new features was rather slow, until in May 2008, OpenMP version 3 was released. And this was the first release supporting task parallelism. I will actually talk in several videos about that later. OpenMP version 4 from 2013 finally added support for accelerator programming, like supporting GPUs. OpenMP version 5 brought support for the tool interface. So all those major releases bring something that is really new. Depending on when you look at this, when you watch this video, OpenMP version 5.1 might have been released because it's scheduled for release in November 2020. So what is OpenMP? I said it, or it was on the slide before, it's a de facto standard for application for. So what is OpenMP? It was written on the slide before, it's a de facto standard for shared memory parallel programming supporting C, C++ and Fortran. So OpenMP is defined as a specification that is free to implement for anyone who is interested, and this is what the Open in OpenMP stands for. And it offers compiler directives. These are, for example, the pragmas in C and C++ that we're going to take a look at in a few minutes. Runtime routines. This is an API, so that means functionality that can be called from within your parallel program. And environment variables. These are, let me call it, settings that you can set before starting an OpenMP program to influence its behavior. So I like this uh, picture on the right hand side because for many people who knew OpenMP from the very beginning, the current standard looks quite different from what they have in mind. This might not be a problem for people just starting to learn about OpenMP. So later on we will see that OpenMP incorporates several different um, methodologies to express parallelism. So we have threading and work sharing. This is what we will start with in this series. We have tasking, we have accelerators, we have simd parallelism, and recently we have added support for memory management, restructuring of loops, and so forth. So it incorporates many different aspects into a single standard, which makes a standard in itself very complex, but it gives you as a programmer the advantage of having a well-defined semantic when incorporating all those aspects into your parallel program. So OpenMP still offers a functionality from 1997, but it also has evolved significantly over the years and supports modern multi-core, multi-socket, accelerated systems with heterogeneous memory. So let's take a look at the um, execution and memory model of OpenMP and then the, as I said, most fundamental construct, which is a parallel region. So what's OpenMP machine model? There's no explicit machine model within the standard, but let me just uh, call it like that, because this is kind of an implicit assumption about how the system looks like when there's an OpenMP parallel program being developed. So we have a set of processors. On current systems, these could be processors of co or cores. And we have what is a shared memory. That means the memory is accessible by all processors in the system. There's a lot in between, in particular on modern architectures, where we have a hierarchy of caches and a quite complicated and sometimes really scalable 
interconnect, to which I referred here as a crossbar or bus. Why did I select this picture? Well, this was a typical SMP machine in, let's say, 2000 or something like that, when OpenMP was actually gaining popularity and uh, companies like IBM or Sun were offering such systems. The idea in OpenMP is that parallelism is expressed in terms of threads, and then these threads run on individual processors, which nowadays, for example, are or could be multi-core processors. So the term processor or core can be interchanged when thinking about OpenMP. It's made for high-performance computing, so that means, or with high-performance computing in mind, that means the idea is that each thread has its own, for example, core on which it is running, so it's not sharing compute resources with many other systems, which makes OpenMP very useful, for example, to parallelize algorithms, but it's not the right approach to, for example, implement a web server. And this is a simple picture of OpenMP's memory model. So I said it before, all the threads, denoted as T in this figure, have access to a shared memory. Think about the parallel problem. The large amount of data that's going to be processed in parallel resides in this shared memory, and all threads can read it and modify it. The, if the threads have to exchange information, this is also done via the shared memory, either explicitly in your program code or implicitly, for example, via OpenMP API routines, constructs, directives, and so forth. However, threads also have a private memory. For example, if you parallelize a loop, as we will see in the next video, the loop control variable has to be different for each thread, because otherwise they would basically work on the same set of iterations. So that means each thread needs some private memory to store local information. Technically, in languages like C and C++, with, for example, pointers, it's possible to read from or write to private memory of another thread, but this is not allowed in OpenMP. And if you just use OpenMP's constructs and um, follow a few simple rules, um, you will always be okay. But what I'm trying to say is that threads have a access to a shared memory, and they also have their private memory, but those they can't see into variables or information in general that is stored in the private memory of another thread. If you make use of OpenMP synchronization constructs, the data transfer via the shared memory is completely transparent to you as a programmer and also to the application. And this is finally OpenMP's execution model. So here on the slide, I'm still writing master thread because many books do so, but mm, politically more correct, this nowadays is referred to as the so-called initial thread. And this is a thread that started when your program starts. So that means OpenMP starts with just one thread, meaning a sequential execution, which is referred to as the initial thread. An OpenMP program then consists of a series of, so of so-called parallel regions. That means at the encountering of a parallel region, the OpenMP runtime creates a set of so-called worker threads, and the initial thread plus the worker threads form the so-called team of threads that's available for the execution within the parallel region. So that means all the work in your program could be shared among the threads in this team. A parallel region has a begin and an end. And that means at the end, the OpenMP program continues with only one thread being active in terms of executing your program. But the other threads are not necessarily destroyed. In fact, in almost all cases, they are just put to sleep. And this putting to sleep can be technically quite complex, but this complexity is managed by the OpenMP runtime. In particular, a good OpenMP runtime manages to have the threads woken up in time for the next parallel region, possibly with a different number of threads, as illustrated in this figure. So the thread management is completely done by the OpenMP runtime. However, it's your responsible as a programmer to express the parallelism. And then the compiler plus the OpenMP runtime take care of the exploitation. OpenMP with this 
um, as a sequence of parallel region implements a so-called fork join concept. So that means uh, when threads are being created, we have a fork, and at the end of a parallel region, we have a join. That means the program continues sequentially. This comes with some overhead. However, modern OpenMP runtimes are really, really good at managing this overhead, as I said before. But it also comes with a, a special feature. So that means you can incrementally parallelize your program. That means you can take a look at those places, routines, paths in your program that consume most of the runtime, then add OpenMP in order to make it parallel. parallel. That means you do not initially have to restructure your whole parallel program in order to profit, uh, your whole existing program in order to profit from any parallelism. And this is now the parallel region on the left hand side displayed for C and C++. That means it's expressed by the means of a pragma, which is a compiler directive. And on the right hand side expressed in Fortran as a special comment that's also recognized by any OpenMP compiler. So let me focus on the C and C++ in my explanation here. So a parallel region has a begin and an end. And it's not allowed to jump from, for example, before the parallel region into the parallel region or to jump out of it. For example, with a go-to statement or something like that. If you do so, you might be lucky that everything works as expected, but you're violating the rules of the OpenMP standard. That means the result of the execution of your program generally is undefined. If you have to cancel the parallel region, there's only um, the op option to call an abort or an exit or to make use of some other OpenMP constructs that we will discuss later on. It's important to notice that this and also all the other OpenMP constructs do not explicitly express the degree of parallelism here. So this parallel region, meaning that uh, making sure that there's a, a team of threads could um, result in the execution of your program with only two threads or with four or with 200. And this is controlled by an environment variable that's called OMP underscore num underscore threads. And typically, and I will do so in my example in a minute, you set it to a certain value, which is then the size of the OpenMP team, meaning the initial thread plus the worker threads. If you don't want to work with environment variables, there are also other options to determine the degree of parallelism. Um, that results from a parallel region, for example, via the num threads clause, which is something that you would write behind the pragma on p parallel, and it could take an argument, or there are other API calls. So now let me show you how OpenMP works with a very simple example. I'm logged into an HPC system at Aachen University. However, this looks very similar to uh, every, any other Linux system. Let me take a look at this Hello World CPP code. And you see it's a straightforward C++ Hello World program. The only modification here is that I um, have an OpenMP parallel region in line 22 expressed as a pragma. And it says Hello World, I'm thread so an OpenMP API call of another OpenMP API call. So OpenMP threads always have an ID, which is an identifier. And the initial thread has the ID zero, and the other threads in the team have the ID one, two, and so forth until n minus one, if we have n threads as the number of threads in the team. OMP underscore get underscore thread underscore num is the API call to return the ID of the thread calling this API function while OMP get num threads is the API call to return the number of threads in the current team. If you would call both routines in the sequential part, the first would return zero and the other would return one because there's only one thread. So now let me compile this code program with uh, G++ for example. And what I have to add is I have to tell the compiler that I want to recognize to, uh, that I wanted to recognize the OpenMP directives. So this is why I have to add this dash F OpenMP to enable the OpenMP functionality. If I then set the OMP num threads variable to the value of one, 
the program will execute and print out the values that I've just shown. So think about it. What would happen if I execute it with four threads? Well, we see that there are four threads active, but to some extent they mix up the output result. And let me execute it again, and you see the output looks slightly different. So it's not completely character garbage, yeah, but the individual, let me just call it token that were written to the command line via individual calls to STDC out and subsequently fprintf and so forth, come up in an order that determines that is determined more or less by the operating system, because the operating system is responsible to schedule those threads, that means to put them onto the, onto the CPU whenever they flag themselves of, as being ready to be scheduled. And the operating system doesn't know anything about the intent that you had when writing the code. So it means it will just schedule threads in the order that they are ready and the order that CPU cores or any other resources are available. And this is the first important lesson. When expressing parallelism, do not make any assumption about the order in which things might happen unless you enforce it explicitly, for example, by proper synchronization. Here I didn't do any synchronization, so that means the OpenMP runtime takes the initial thread and three additional threads, and they will all execute the body of the parallel region. And one will go first, might be interrupted, the next will uh, come in, and so forth. This is because there's other load being on the system, yeah? but in general, even if you have the system for yourself, there's no defined order in which threads will be started and executed because this is up, by, up to the operating system, which might be interrupted by so many other events. So how did I set the number of threads to be used or to, to determine the size of the team here? Let me just review that. If within a Linux or Unix shell, you want to set the number of threads and keep that environment variable on pnum threads to be persistent, you can make use of a command that in most shells is called export. And then you can just run your program. And the next time you run it, the variable is still there. What I just did was something like this. I said OMP num threads equals four, and then called my program, which is just a one-time setting. So that means the variable is gone after the execution of my program. And this concludes the first overview lecture of OpenMP. In the next one, we will start with actually distributing work among the threads.